Why is this night so different from all the other nights of the year? On this special and happy night, our fathers ate in speed. Ate the Paschal lamb ere midnight, and from their slavery they were freed. This is the night of freedom for the people of Israel. No more bondage, no more cruel master. To the land of promise Yahweh would lead. Why is this night so different from all the other nights of the year? In an upper room, Jesus ate with his disciples the night before he would give his life for us. He washed their feet as a sign to serve. Love one another as I have loved you, said he. Why is this night so different from all the other nights of the year? Take and eat, take and drink. Do this in memory of me. In the Eucharist, he promised to remain, to be with us forever in our lives. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, a blessed Holy Thursday to you. My brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord have mercy. 
came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of per persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. 
this day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generation shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done to me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Fresh us in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. 
he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him and said, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined again at table, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago, I read a book that was a very important book in that time of my life, and it's one I've gone back to several times with great benefit. It's called Priests for the Third Millennium, and it was written by then Monsignor Timothy Dolan. He was the rector of the American Seminary in Rome. He is now the Cardinal Archbishop of New York City. His name would be familiar to many. In that book, he talks about the priest as a man of prayer. He tells the story of a man in his parish. He was a new, young, eager priest who was in the hospital. The man was in the hospital. He had a large family, a lot of kids. And all of his kids, his adult children, were around his bedside. And he was giving them their marching orders. You know, you... Get in touch with the lawyers. Make sure they're kept up to date with what's going on with the business. You call our client list and make sure they know that I'm going to be fine. And you make sure the family is kept up to date, take care of your mother, so on and so forth, giving all of the children their role in this particular situation. The young father, Dolan, eager to help, stepped forward and said, what am I supposed to do? And he paints a very colorful image when he says, everyone in the room looked at him like he was a complete idiot. And the man said, Father, you're supposed to pray. That line hits home with me often, to be honest. But in particular, in these crazy coronavirus days when we are prevented out of respect and sensitivity to the health and safety of our friends and, and, and community members to stay away from each other, to not come together in prayer. But yet we're still called to pray. And my prayer as a Christian, but as a priest, and the importance of my intercessory role has had a very beneficial spotlight shown on it for me, certainly. But I think for many priests, we are tempted, we can feel isolated because we can't come to Mass. We can't receive the Eucharist. 
And so we can think that we're separate. And my great hope and my great intention in my prayer is that the community of St. Mary's Foxborough, but also the community of the wider church, feel the very real effects of the supernatural unity we still have precisely in the Mass and the Eucharist. Though many are not able to physically participate, at every Mass I say, many things come crashing in on me, but the one truly important thing I would remind us all of is that we are united in this. Me, as your pastor, you are my intention at Mass, I say every day, for you, precisely because I can't see you. I can't tell you I'm praying for you. I cannot offer you the body and blood of Christ. One of the other things that comes crashing in on me is not only the duty to pray the Mass for you, a happy duty, but a duty, important one nonetheless, but the extraordinary privilege it is, just as a Christian, that the Lord has invited me to be his priest. It's an extraordinary blessing and a humbling privilege. Again, with a spotlight being shown on it in a new and unique way, precisely because I don't see you. <laughs> I miss you. Gathering together on Sunday is a beautiful thing that maybe we've all taken for granted. Hopefully, none of us do anymore. Those two things then, the reality of the priesthood in the Eucharist and our role and relationship to them are precisely what the church has us celebrate tonight. The Eucharist, the institution, the most blessed sacrament, Christ, giving himself to us, really, truly, substantially present in the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. It is the most important thing in the universe. Again, let me say that again. It is the most important thing in the universe precisely because it isn't a thing. It is the Lord. And the priesthood exists for that reality and in that reality. No priesthood, no Eucharist. No Eucharist, no priesthood. No Eucharist, no church. No us. Living a priestly life aside from the Eucharist is absurd. It's a contradiction, really. And so every priest, I'm sure, on this night, but also in all of these private masses that we've been saying, has felt the extraordinary bond with Christ the High Priest in a new way, but also the unity with their people, the people that have been entrusted to us by the Lord. And just know you are very much in my prayers this Holy Thursday, though we are separated, we are not alone. Though we are not with each other, we are all with our Lord. We celebrate then, not with any sense of triumphalism or uh, self-aggrandizing specialness, but recognizing the unique gift the Catholic Church possesses and only the Catholic Church possesses the true presence of Jesus Christ in the tabernacle and available to us in communion. It is worth the sacrifices of the priesthood. No mere symbol is. But because it's not a symbol, because it is the Lord, the priesthood has been given to the church as well as an extraordinary treasure. Pray for vocations. It's not a staffing issue. It's not a personnel decision. It's a gift that we should be eager 
the people in our lives and our families and our relationships know, celebrate, and hold up. And praise God, maybe people in our families become priests. My life is inconceivable aside from my ordination. Nothing about me or my life makes any sense aside from the fact that Jesus Christ put me on this planet to be his priest. And I thank God for it. And I thank God for you and the opportunity to pray for you. What am I supposed to do as I'm sheltering in place? I imagine that family turning and looking at me like an idiot and saying, Father, you're supposed to pray. Know that I am. Know that Father Hines is. Know that all the priests of the archdiocese, all the priests of the world are praying. That leads directly into the other great celebration of Holy Thursday, the very dramatic and the very beautiful mandatum rite, the mandate from the Lord, the washing of the feet, which we will not be celebrating this evening in compliance with the liturgical directives of the church. But that image of the priest who's acting in the person of Christ at Mass removes his garment takes the place of a servant washing the feet of his disciples. And then, to make sure his disciples get it, they understand the gesture, he says, what I have done, you must do. Friends, any love we profess to have for God that is not manifested in our way of life and our way of living and loving with the people around us is empty without following that great mandate. We must be servants of one another to anticipate each other in doing honor, to look for opportunities for the corporal, spiritual works of mercy, to be the last and the least. That is also very much incumbent upon us and held up to us on Holy Thursday. So I thank God for the opportunity to celebrate this wonderful feast with you in this unusual and odd way. But the reality that we celebrate is greater than any illness and it's greater than any distance. Friends, let us stand and proudly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Confident that God hears the prayers of his church, we turn to him now with all of our needs and intentions. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, 
that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts aversion for our sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we turn to you with these our prayers. We unite them to the prayers of the blessed and ever-glorious Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and of all of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the 
holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Ange lingua gloriosi, corporis mysterio, sanguinisque preziosi, quem imildi prezio, fructus ventris generosi, Rex affordi gentio. Tantum ergo sacramento. Vede fremur cerdui. Et anticum documento. No voce dat ritui. Prestet fide supplemento. Sensum defectui. Genitori genitoque. Lasset jubilatio. Salus honor virtus quoque, sit et benedicio. Procedenti habut roque, comparsit laudatio. 